There's nothing to gain when we study the Ketoot in a hurry by heart without paying any attention to the meaning of the words. It's also good that we make sure to recite each ingredient properly and correctly so that we aren't saying other words in place of the original text. The passages of Ketoot are then followed by Abaye Hava, which is sourced from the Talmud in Yuma 33a and Anna the Hoach. The Abaye passage is inserted here in order to fulfill our sages' teaching, where anyone who studies the laws of Ketoet, where anyone who studies the laws of Kolbanot will be rewarded as if participated in the offering, even though we no longer have the Beit HaMikdash. It's important to point out that we need to pause between the words Abaya and Haba. If there's no pause, it could sound like we're pronouncing one of Hashem's names, which is a capital sin. After that, it's followed by the passage of Anna Bechowach. The Kabbalah stresses the importance of the passage, that it should be said after the Abaya passage, that it's a prayer for Hashem to rescue Israel from exile, and that we should be sure to say it and not skip it. There are 42 words in this passage, corresponding to the 42 letter of Hashem's name. Each of the seven lines represents a name consisting of six letters. Many Sidulim have abbreviations of the letters at the end of each line to help the reader meditate on the names. It's then followed by the verse, Baruch Hashem Kvod Malchuto Le'olam Ba'ed. After the passages of Korban Tamid and the Ketot, it's followed by Zil Mekuman, which means what is the location of the offerings, found in the Mishnah Zavachim chapter 5, and then the Baraita of Rabbi Ishmael, found in Yomat 33a. The Talmud in Kiddushin 30a teaches that we should study scripture, Mishnah, and Gemara every day in fulfillment of our sages' teaching. They instituted that Zil Mekuman be inserted here, which covers all three of these categories. Megin Avram points out that the Baraita of Rabbi Ishmael is counted as Torah study, but only if we understand and pay attention to the meaning of the passage. If it's recited in a hurry, without any value, it accomplishes little to nothing. It's not like prayer, where it's possible that Hashem accept it, even though we understand very little of what's being said in some cases. This is important for working people who rely on these passages to count as their Torah study for the day. Rabbeinu Bachia states that Moshe and Aaron blessed the people immediately after offering the Ketoet, since they knew that their prayer would be accepted best at that time. Likewise, for this reason, King David says in Tehillim 141.2, May my prayer be acceptable to you as Ketoet. King David knew that the Ketoet is Hashem's favorite offering, that the prayers that are most favorably accepted in heaven are those prayers and passages that are connected to the Ketoet offering.